warm welcome to all the students here. Um, so today we will be covering on the hydraulic system maintenance. The previous week we already looked at the pneumatic system maintenance. So as a continuation, today uh, I will be covering on hydraulic system maintenance. So this topic today is just an overview of uh, uh, common hydraulic maintenance issues and uh, activities which are taking place uh, in the industries. Okay, so before we go into the maintenance uh, topic, so I will do some revision, okay, because you need to know the hydraulic uh, circuit symbols uh, to in order to un better understand why the maintenance is performed. Okay, certain maintenance activity uh, performed based on the requirement of the subcomponents of the hydraulic system. Okay, so now let's look at the percentage of uh, maintenance costs, okay? So these are the costs that they pay to maintain the hydraulic system which they have, okay? Hydraulic system in the industry can be heavy duty machines, okay? Uh, machining tools and all this, okay? In the, uh, we also have uh, mobile hydraulics which are used in the trucks, lorries, Okay, tractors and so on. Okay, that is a mobile hydraulics. We, we have two, two types of uh, hydraulic application. So overall, uh, it is important to note that most of the hydraulic problems, okay, which occurs are uh, based on the pumps. Okay, most of the time we have problems with the pumps and we spend a lot of money to repair the pumps. Okay. We also have other problems such as filter, housing, uh, deterioration, and uh, leakage, valve, uh, ram, cylinder, seals, hoses, and oil. But among all these problems, pumps play a very uh, big role. Okay, similar pump is similar to your heart. Okay? If you human, we have heart. Pump is also a heart of the hydraulic system. So we have to really take care of the pump. Okay? If pump is not taken care, uh, other components which are interconnected to the pump will be spoiled. So the important thing here is that the pump is a, uh, is a contributes to a very high uh, cost of maintenance. Okay, so I think you should be all uh, clear about this. And then if you look at the picture here, okay, you have uh, this picture here. Okay, you can see that the force which uh, is being exerted from the hydraulic cylinder can be, be very high. Okay, you can see that a metal rod can be bent using a hydraulic system. Okay, now let's look at the, some revisions. Okay, let's go for some revisions. So this is what you have already learned okay, in the previous topics. You have already learned about hydraulic system. So you know that we have uh, three categories in uh, hydraulic system. First, we have this uh, power supply section. Power supply section is the place where oil is being transferred into the hydraulic system, okay, such as valve and uh, uh, cylinders, actuators. Okay, uh, so in this circuit here, okay, just I uh, would like to ask you which is the pump, which symbol represents the pump. Okay, so you can say that this whole system, whole part here is called as a power pack. Okay, power pack or it is a combination of uh, components inside a pump. Okay, so you should remember this symbol. Okay, this symbol is very important. Any hydraulic system, it begins with the power supply section and the power supply section contains of this uh, power pack. Okay, power pack. Okay, so what you actually have inside your power pack? Okay, let's look into details. So we have, uh, first we have a motor. Okay, hydraulic motors can be single phase or three phase. Three phase means we have 415 voltage in Malaysia and uh, 240 volt AC, 230 to 240 volt AC for single phase in Malaysia. Okay, so this is for the motor. 
for very high force or uh, in application which requires very high force, there is a need to use a three-phase motor. Okay, for simple application where the force required is very low, then the power pack can be uh, run using a single-phase motor. So this is a motor symbol, and this is a coupling here. Okay, this part here is a coupling. Coupling is uh, how you join the. It is a join for the motor and the pump. Okay, it's a type of a connector which you can connect to the motor and connect to the pump in order when the motor rotates, the pump will also rotate and start to flow the oil. Okay, and then this part here, we have the pump. Okay, this is the pump. Okay, this is the pump. Okay, then further, this section here, okay, you notice here, right? This is a very, normally the tank symbol, they draw like this, correct? Okay, this is the tank symbol. Okay, the tank symbol, here, it is at the bottom here, this is the tank, okay? The tank surface, so the oil is being sucked from the tank to the pump into the system, okay? The oil is sucked from here into the system by the pump. This is how it works, okay? So, when the oil start to flow, then they have a control, power control section, okay? Power control section is where you have valves, Okay, you have 4-3-way valve, you have 4-2-way uh, valve, okay, many kinds of valve with the different types of actuation. Actuation means how you on and uh, return actuation. Okay, there are many types. In this case, they are using a rev lever, okay, L-E-V-E-R, lever. So the valve is basically to control the oil. Uh, this is a control section. When you on the oil, when you on the valve, sorry, the oil will flow into your system and the cylinder will start to rotate. Clear. So that is the basic things that the pump require. Okay. And then we also have other important part. Okay. So let's say when you on the pump, okay, when you on the pump, the oil will start to flow. Oil will start to flow. Okay, let's say you have a block here, for example, huh? there's a block here. So what happens to the oil? The oil will, hydraulic oil will start to flow, 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 and the pressure will start to build up. Once when the pressure start to build up, it will break your hose. So for that reason, in order to make sure the pressure does not build up, they have a pressure relief valve. Okay, this is a pressure relief valve. P R B pressure relief valve. The function of the pressure relief valve is to make sure whenever the pressure is very high, uh, it will open up and it will release some oil into the tank to make sure the pressure does not increase. Okay, so this will make sure the pressure, the pressure here is balanced. Okay, is reduced and balanced. Okay, this is a very important component in your power pack. This is a pressure relief valve. Okay, very critical component. So beside that, you also have a filter. Okay, this is a filter. So the further topic, I will explain more on the types of filter that we have. Okay. So, and the final section is the drive section. Okay, drive section, you have a cylinders, Okay, or you have a hydraulic motors, okay, or you have a, a single acting cylinder, okay. These are called actuators, okay, actuators. Any components, because they perform movement, so they are called as actuators. Okay, so that was a revision. Okay, revision on your basic hydraulic system, which you should have uh, known, uh, you should have uh, learned in the previous topics. Okay, another question. What is this? Why do you need to put a check valve here? What is the reason? Okay, this symbol represents a check valve. 
okay check valve check valve only allow one way flow means the oil can only flow one way okay there is no two way flow okay. only one way the oil can only flow like this this way from the other direction the oil will be blocked cannot it cannot flow it will be blocked okay so what is the purpose of installing a check valve here okay now let's say this is your cylinder and then your cylinder is uh, performing a very high force application it's being used for so the force being applied on the cylinder will go here okay will flow down to the control section and will also flow down to the pump section and the oil will reverse direction when the force outside high the oil will reverse direction and flow into the pump this is not good okay once when the oil flow reverse into the pump it will spoil your pump so that's why they install a check valve here okay to make sure there is no reverse direction flow into the pump so hope you understand so that is the reason for the uh, installation of the check valve in this section okay so now let's look at the further section there's a video here <coughs> This is a video to show you an example of a hydraulic system. This simple system clearly illustrates system design. The power supply section. The power control section. And the drive section. So another example here, let's see here, you have a drive unit, you have a pump, okay, drive unit is, uh, as what I explained before, this is a motor, okay, this is an electrical motor, electrical motor which can be uh, three phase, okay, three phase or single phase electrical motor. <coughs> 415 volt or 230 to 240 volt in Indonesia and then you have a hydraulic pump hydraulic pump is a just a mechanical part which is connected to the motor there is no electrical connection to the hydraulic pump okay the pump is actually being driven being rotated by the motor uh, through a coupling which is connected between them okay so any hydraulic pump you must uh, there should be a motor, uh, electrical motor, either three phase motor or single phase motor. So, when the pump operates, what the pump will do? It will suck, okay? The pump will suck the oil from the tank, tank, or you can call it as a reservoir, okay? Similar meaning, suck from the tank and it goes into your valve or actuator, okay? This is what that happens, okay? Whenever you have a very high pressure, Okay, whenever you have very high pressure, the pressure relief valve, okay, the pressure relief valve here, this is the pressure relief valve, okay, pressure relief valve will operate and reduce the pressure. Okay, and then we also have cooler and heater, okay, cooler and heater. Why do we need cooler and heater? Okay, the temperature of the oil is very important, okay, you have to make sure that the oil is in the right temperature. If the oil is hot, then the oil will become thin, okay? It will start to flow very fast. And when you have very high flow, your, you, there will be leakage on the hydraulic components. Okay, that's what happens when the oil is hot. What happens when the oil is cold? When the oil is cold, it will become thick, okay? Once when the oil is thick, it uh, the component will be very slow the movement of the component it will be difficult for the component to perform action okay so we have to make sure always make sure that the temperature of the oil is at the right uh, the temperature so that's why we have a cooler and heater installed in the power pack to make sure every time when the temperature is out of range the cooler or heater will operate and bring back the temperature into the range Okay, so basically this is what you should have known, okay, from the previous lesson. This is just a revision, okay. Now we will go into our today's topic, which is hydraulic maintenance.
So before that, I will show you a video of the power pack, hydraulic power pack or hydraulic pump. This hydraulic pump is an external gear pump. This is how fluid flow is created. The suction chamber is connected to the oil tank. When the two gear wheels turn, the volume of the chamber increases slightly whenever a tooth leaves a gap. This creates a partial vacuum in the suction chamber, which then causes the oil to be drawn out of the tank. Oil is transported between the gear teeth along the chamber walls to the pressure chamber. The intermeshing teeth prevent the oil in the middle from flowing back. The oil now flows from the pressure chamber into the line, where it's displaced by the oil being supplied continuously from the gear wheels. Initially, the pump doesn't create pressure, but only a fluid flow. Not until the fluid meets with resistance, for example line resistance or a load, as in the case of our platform lift, does hydraulic pressure build up. When pressure is higher than the resistance of the workload, the piston begins to advance until it reaches its upper end position. If the pump continues to supply fluid and pressure continues to rise, something will eventually have to give. Either the line will burst or the pump or cylinder will be damaged. This is prevented by a pressure relief valve, which is set to the maximum pressure of the pump. It doesn't open until this pressure has been reached, at which time it channels the hydraulic oil back to the tank. It's usually combined with a pressure gauge to form a unit. The external gear pump generates a constant flow rate because delivery rate is kept at a fixed quantity by the gaps between the gear wheel teeth. Okay, so that was an illustration video on the pump, how it operates. So this is a, a mini pump, okay, it is a portable pump which is normally being used uh, with the training set that we have in, our, in the college there. Okay, so the symbol for this, you have, uh, this is the symbol. So as you can see here, the pressure relief valve, this is a pressure relief valve, and this is located here. Okay, and then you have a motor, right? Okay, motor, this is the motor here. Okay, and then you have a pump. Okay, you have pump. The pump is inside here, okay, this is the pump, okay? And then you have a coupling, okay? This uh, metal block here is a coupling, okay? This is the components of the hydraulic system, okay? Hydraulic pump unit. Okay, then let's look at the types of uh, reservoir, okay? We're going to move into our topic today, hydraulic maintenance, types of reservoir. So reservoir, as I told you earlier, is a tank, Okay, we have uh, many types of tank. We have a conventional, okay, this is a conventional tank. And then we have a overhead. Conventional tank, the working machines are on the top, okay. In the overhead type, the working machines are at the bottom. Okay, and then we also have L-shape. The pump and the working machines are at the same level. Okay, these are three types of uh, configuration of a reservoir which are frequently used uh, when we are setting up the machines. Okay, this is the internal part of the tank. Okay, so I've already explained to you the pump <coughs> and uh, many parts of it. So let's look at the baffle, okay, baffle. Baffle is a baffle plate. So when your oil is flowing up from the tank, flowing out from the tank, and then when it returns, it will be in a very fast okay, movement. So once when the oil flows fast, it will start to bubble. Right? Bubble start to create into the tank. And uh, once when there's bubble in the tank, it, the oil uh, will cause cavitation okay, in the component. Cavitation. Okay, cavitation is uh, another problem. Okay, cavitations. Okay, this I will explain in the following topics, okay, uh, maybe in the future topics, I will explain the cavitation. 
Okay, cavitation is a very serious problem in the hydraulic system. So, when the oil is flowing very fast and the movement of the oil is fast, to make sure the oil is uh, pacified, okay, uh, to slow down, they have a baffle plate here. This baffle plate will make sure the oil is back to the normal, uh, uh, they, they mean they are not very, the flow is back to the normal speed. Right, to make sure there's no bubble form in the tank. Okay, another important plug here, <coughs> here is the uh, breather filter. Okay, breather filter. So when your oil is uh, hot, right, hot or cold, okay, it will accept pressure. So you need a uh, breather to make sure that there's no pressure build up inside. So breather, it will make sure the accepting pressure is released into the atmosphere. <clears throat> okay, and then you have a strainer here. Strainer is to similar to uh, filtering. Okay, it will fill out the contamination in the oil. Okay, uh, and then to make sure the oil is clean. So basically, this is the internal structure of the uh, tank. And most importantly, this is the symbol of the tank. Okay, please make sure you don't forget the symbol, the, the symbol of the tank. Okay, now let's go to the next uh, next uh, part here. Is showing the types of filter. Okay, three there are three ways you can fix a filter into your system. Okay, first is a return flow line. Okay, so as you can see here, oil is flowing here into your valve and then into your cylinder and then returning here. It is returning to the tank. Okay, so you can put your filter here. That means you filter the returning oil. This is one method, okay, first method. And the second method, method is a pump inlet filter. So it means uh, when you suck the oil, when the oil is being sucked by the pump, you already install the filter here. Okay, so it will make sure that at the very beginning itself, the oil is being filtered. Another method is uh, fixing the filter after the pump. Pressure line filter. Okay, it goes into the pump and then filter and goes up. Okay, what is the difference? What is the advantage and disadvantage? So you can find it here. So I will not go further on this because you this is part of your assignment. Okay, but uh, just a brief overview. Okay, this uh, return flow line filter, the disadvantage is the oil, uh, when you first start the system, the oil which is going into the system is not filtered. Okay, there, so there's a possibility for the contamination to uh, go into the hydraulic system. And the second part here, uh, if you fix the oil in the pump inlet filter, this is very good. Okay, very, very good to fix inside the pump inlet filter, but it's very difficult to change the filter. You have to open up your power pack to change the filter. Okay, so that is a disadvantage here. And the third one is a pressure line filter. This is the most, uh, this is quite popular, okay? Because the filter is easily taken out and then easy, easy to replace, okay? So you can further go through on the advantage and disadvantage of this. And these questions, uh, this uh, topic will be part of your assignment later. Not all impurities settle to the bottom of the tank. Also, abrasion during system operation creates tiny particles, and dirt can get in through seals. This is why the hydraulic fluid must also be cleaned by filtration. Inadequate filtration causes premature wear on the system and damage to hydraulic devices, which in turn leads to system malfunction. 